G'day fellas and welcome to a casted game. Spawning in on the north side of the map, playing as the French. It is Liquid de Muslim in the color blue. On the opposite side, in the color red, playing as the Delhi Sultanate, it is going to be running. This map, of course, is going to be Hill and Dale. And we already begin to see running opening up with a little bit of a mill. Going to be heading into that wheelbarrow. Get your wheelbarrow alerts out. You guys know I, I love a good old-fashioned wheelbarrow. And it is no surprise here uh, that we're going to be seeing it coming out from him today as the deli. Uh, so he gets that one for free. He might be even looking to drop down a second mill over on his deer, but we'll have to wait and see how he plays it. Three villagers going to be coming down on that wood line already. We'll take a look over at the base of the Muslim, and it's just going to be sheep gathered up for him. Now, this game is incredibly important. Incredibly, incredibly important. Why is it so important, you might be wondering? Well, this is Golden League. And if you're unfamiliar with Golden League, well, you've probably been sleeping under a rock, or maybe this is the first video you're watching of the channel. Golden League is a $125,000 Age of Empires 4 tournament. We're currently in round number three, which is called Exclusive Civilizations, which is where players get to choose civilizations that their enemies do not. Currently in this series, we are at 1-1 one, one, uh, throughout this Throughout this set, we're at 1-1. One, one. So each player has a game apiece. And this game is going to be the deciding game. And the reason why this is so important is because neither player at this point in time has actually qualified through for the main event of Golden League. In, in fact, we've had three rounds so far, and these players, they've not made it all the way to the final stage. And as a result, they don't really have the points to get into that final stage just yet. And you can see why it would be so important for players to win in this scenario. Just because if you're, if you're able to win here, if you're able to take down your enemy, not only do you push them down, but you literally yourself up and that is really where the difference comes in that's where the pain comes in and it means that you know if, if running was to win or if the muslim was to win then it means that they're going to have to work extra hard to get up or their, their enemy rather is going to have to work up extra hard to get that courage to lift from the lower bracket because you guys will know it's a lot harder fighting from the lower bracket than it is from the top of the bracket it's a lot more cutthroat. You know, you're going to be facing a lot more best of ones. Uh, you're going to be facing a, a lot more of a... Or, in fact, a lot more battles is probably just the best way to say it. Because once you lose, you're going to be going up against a lot of other people who have lost as well. They're going to be angry. And they're going to be shaking, furious. Uh, they are going to be absolutely very upset that they're in the low bracket. They're going to be trying their hardest to stay alive. But uh, we'll see how the Muslim looks to play it. It looks like it's going to be a double scout opening here. Running into both scouts of his enemy at this point in time. Uh, we'll have a look at the uh, the... The, the sheep numbers at this point. So we've got three and nine. So a total of 12 sheep coming out for the Muslim. And compared to running, running sitting at 10. And uh, it's just going to be 10 sheep. So 10 sheep, not too bad. So 12 versus 10. Not a bad haul for, by, for both, both players. A pretty even split between these two. And you would expect that is going to be the case when you've got double scouts coming out for both. But uh, we'll have to see how they look to play it as we enter into this early sta early phase of the game. We've already got uh, efficient production going to be coming out for our Delhi player. Running going to be going into Piety after that. He's going to be making sure to get all those upgrades. Actually, you already researched forestry uh, from the lumber camp. So he is well and truly on his way at this point in time. We'll check back in over with the Muslim. And he's got that age up coming through. It's going to be the School of Cavalry. So no sneaky little trade shenanigans going to be coming out today. You know, you can always see it on a map like this with, a, with just a, a very naughty... Uh, a, a very naughty landmark up in the corner. You, you know, you wouldn't be surprised to see it when it, it, you've got the, this potential to trade down to this corner. But uh, I think it'd be a little bit crazy. You know, I, I say it would be crazy, but we did see the Viper go for the trade wing. So maybe it's not too crazy. Dome of the Faith going to be coming down for running in his base. Looking to tap out a, a pretty pretty quickly. Four villagers on that one. And now at the front of the base, we see the scout going to be moving in. Looking to find out a bit more information regarding the Muslim. To see the layout of the base and see what he gets up to. And I think this is a very interesting matchup. If... Uh, if I was going to give either civilization a favor in this, I would say it's probably French favored if they can get a second town center down without dying. That is going to be my key qualifier. In the event that the, the French don't get a second town center down, I don't think they win. And the reason why is just because of... Look at that. What have we got right there? What is, is that a is that a holy man? Is he reading some scripture right there? <laughs> what is that? I wish we could zoom in further so we could actually inspect that monument. I don't know what monument that is to Muslim, but that is a very nice monument. I, it's unique. I've not seen that before. What monument do we have on the other side? Never mind. Running, just going, <laughs> opting to go with the gong, the classic old gong. But uh, yeah, I would definitely say that in, in this matchup, it's very dangerous to play one town center French. At least that's the way I feel about it. Because playing one town, town center French is basically saying, well, I am going to try my best to kill you before you reach your peak. And that basically gives you like a 10 minute window. And it's not very big. And to be honest, I don't think it's really viable against the Delhi. 
where where does Delhi hit those power spikes? Let's think about it for a second. Once they age up, okay, what they're going to be doing is looking to get these techs in. You can see it takes four minutes at the moment for Horticulture to come in. So nine minutes is going to be that timing. And we see here, Double Broadax going to take another four minutes. We also have Specialized Pick going to take four minutes and 25 seconds. So that nine minute mark is really when the timing comes in because not only do you have your upgrades, you've got efficient production, which is complete. And you, you can see that there, you know, we could fit a, uh, a Scholar into this, uh, into this barracks. Uh, but in addition to that, you've also got Sanctity. Uh, which will be completed there. You can see it. So it's coming through now. Going to be another three minutes before it's in. It'll be in at about 8.30 at this time. Uh, but everything will be online for the Delhi player. And they'll be looking to, to come out onto the map, capture sacred sites. And we can see there's a beautiful double sacred site down towards the south. And if Running's able to control both of these two sacred sites, he's going to be able to leverage that gold income, get himself up to the castle age. And you've got to think about it. You know, that's probably going to be about the ninth, tenth minute that he's really going to start pumping units out. And speaking of pumping units out, look at this. Beautiful timing right here. Spear's going to be coming in. Not a single attack landing in on those villager or villagers and now we see a stable going to be coming down from running so great response in this situation uh, we also see the scout which is uh, providing great cover here uh, and, and looking to, to spot out any of the units does yet does also see the archery range so knows that archers are going to come and as a result spot uh, re responds with the stable but we see the upgrades coming through and remember it's all about that timing window so that's the timing window that Delhi are going to be looking to hit they're going to look to get themselves up to the castle age and that's where their window really starts to open wide and the question is whether we see players look to close or to, to, to go through it. Uh, but now, looks like the sheep going to be running back. He's got 1.61 movement speed. You can see him trying his best to run away from the cavalry behind him. Run, little sheep. Run, little fella. You can see him going, and indeed, the cavalry does fall back. He lost two of his brethren back over towards the middle of the map. Might even think about dropping down a mill there. That's 500 food. That ain't a bad little deal. But... Um, yeah, it, it's, it's a tough spot for running to be in. Um, and rather, I'd, I'd actually say it's probably a harder spot for the Muslim to be in because he looks like he's playing one base at the moment. And I think this is definitely a decent opening going 1-1-1. He makes a lot of sense as the French. I'm, I'm just hoping that we do see a transition because then at least it gives the French a win condition because at the moment, the, their win condition is, is very, very limited against the Delhi, especially on a map like this with the three sacred sites. So once he takes those two sacred sites down to the south, especially, he'll be able to leverage that, get up to the third age. Then he'll be looking to do a timing push. It's going to be mana arms. It's going to be crossbows, uh, maybe even some archers and spears mixed in there. Uh, and then it will most likely be an elephant push coming out towards his base. At least that's the way I suspect it's going to go down and then that, that's really what's difficult to to survive that sort of timing push in the castle age and i think as the french the only way you can really try and keep up with that is maybe look to stay in feudal age you know go for that standard knights archer uh that combo and then go two town centers behind i don't think you can match it with castle we have seen players successfully go up against the delhi and do that as the french but the question will be whether the muslim looks to do that because he is not playing the easiest matchup here but uh, th this is owed to the fact that we've got exclusive civilizations coming out for these players. Now, remember that that is part of the rules in EGC TV's uh, third round. That means that players are not able uh, to choose the civilizations that their opponents have chosen. So in this series, we've had the Muslim that's picked the French. And he's not going to be able to replay that civilization. And we've got running who has picked the Delhi. And the Muslim is not going to be able to pick that because, you know, he, he has done that. And by the same token, running not going to be able to pick it uh, more than once in the series either. Uh, so, yeah, it, it's exclusive from uh, players. And you can only play the civilization once you've used it as well. Um, or you can only play it once. Uh, in, in, in through the duration of the series. It's, it, it's complicated, but essentially you just need to just just think of it like this way. If my enemy's got a civilization, I can't play it. Uh, and now all of a sudden deleting the wall, he says, you know what? I'm just going to come straight through. I reckon I can take that fight. And indeed he does. And now bringing all of his army into the middle through the gap, he deletes the wall and he heads straight through. He says, I'm coming for you, mate. You better watch out. And indeed he better watch out. All of these horsemen just coming through, mauling the archers that were there. The Muslim completely unaware, taken by surprise. The massive surprise wall delete in this scenario is going to be huge for running as he continues to run it down mid. You can see the spears now going to be coming out. Is there an archery range that has been dropped down behind this? It doesn't look like it's come down just yet, but now it's going to be coming down and he's going to be looking to pump out archers non-stop. You can see the spearmen yet to really build up in number. The horsemen continue to overwhelm and this is a perfect opening in this scenario for running. This is exactly what he needed. Ideally the Muslim wanted to avoid fighting and he, you could see the way he was sitting behind that fence. He was very, very happy with the fact that there was a, a wall there and all of a sudden the wall was gone and then he was sad and then he was sad tears streamed upon his face but now those knights gonna be catching a couple of horsemen in the base here one of them does go down second one gonna be going down third one on pretty low health gonna be able to get away head back to those scholars and find himself a new way to survive but i suspect we're gonna be seeing a reseal of this wall up towards the front line he does have the the spearmen standing by ready to heal it up but the sacred sites are now being taken first one gonna get taken by the three scholars it's not gonna take it's not gonna tick three times as 
as fast, even though I'm sure you would like it to do that. It is not going to be the case. Second Sacred Sight going to get taken up as well. And we can see Demuslim moving out over into this position. Demuslim's got to scout together with his unit, so he's going to have plenty of line of sight, but we can also see running is moving, trying to intercept, and now archers, and, or rather spearmen moving out, and actually going to be able to drop down this wall, doing a great job as they manage to block it off. First Sacred Sight going to be going down towards running. He's going to be super happy with this. And at, at the same time, looking to, to pick up this wall in the middle. Now going to be dropping a gate, and the gate is going to enable him to, him to him to pass through, but his opponent, not so much. And now the question is, where do the forces of the Muslim go? He's got the scout with them, so he's going to be able to provide line of sight here. He's going to be able to see what is up. He can now see as well onto the sacred site, but he knows that wall is there. So he might be thinking about coming around from a different angle. Instead, going to be looking to come up towards the top. You can see the archers moving down towards this position, and once again, we may have ourselves a bit of a battle beginning to unfold. And indeed, players now decide to go their separate ways as the Muslim hovers once again, looking to try and find an angle but remember behind this that the Delhi player is now online. We are online as Delhi. We've got every single upgrade. You can see Horticulture is going to be coming through right now. It's 11 minutes, so he's opted to go for survival techniques. Actually, that's the Muslim. I apologize. Uh, over on the other side, you've got Horticulture that is coming through. He did end he did opt for survival techniques, so technically, I'm not wrong. I'm not wrong. Just was looking at the wrong player. But now those upgrades continuing to come through. But this is where the Delhi player is really starting to come online. He's taken both of those sacred sites. We have seen the wall up from both of those angles. And now we can see in the middle, this is ideally in this fight, this is something that running doesn't want to lose. If he loses here, it's going to be tough for him. Uh, but he's going to continue to push the issue. And now both players looking to try and take control of the middle of the map. We can see the horsemen managing to get in on, on the action, but unfortunately running into a few spears. Going to be trying their best to loop around towards the north, but a lot of knights still here. It's not looking good for running. And all of a sudden, the tables start to turn. Even though you've got those extra sacred sites, all of a sudden, I've got a bigger military, and Demuslim looks to ram it in his face. And he's, exactly what he's going to do is he continues to head down mid. That hole in the wall has been sealed up. A gate has been added. And now he looks toward uh, towards that uh, that point as a, a point of safety. But the question is, where does Demuslim go for here? Does he go for the throat? Or does he look to take off a limb of his opponent? Does he look to, to try and do a bit of a... a uh, how would you say? A, I, I, it's not a decapitation, but you, you guys know what I mean. You know, he's, he's essentially looking to cut off the arm over here. The the, uh, the the first arm of Exodia, it seems, and the second arm as well. Uh, don't forget that one, but he's going to be in a great spot to do it. If we take a look at the military population difference between these two, 17 for running at the moment compared to 26 for Demuslim. And keep in mind, a lot of these units are knights, which effectively can count for two. So realistically, you're thinking like maybe 38 population. That's that's the real, that, that that's the effective uh, unit number here but now gonna be able to run behind the walls and the question is what the muslim looks to do well, we see from his position that he does actually have a scout mixed in with these units so he's going to be able to find villages if that's what he's looking for there are villages that are out on this wood line quite exposed up towards the north there's also villages on the gold just two of them going to be ticking away he's also got that gold income coming through from his sacred site so you can see despite having only two villages on gold he's got more than 1100 gold stacked up right now and now archers looking to go mono in mono toe to toe with their enemy as the enemy begins to push in and now a, a lot of horsemen uh, or rather a lot of knights beginning to come out those spears going to be trying their best to fend off in this position not going to have a lot of luck here as those archers is unfortunately going to be, begin dwindling down in number and Spearman got to be kept back just to make sure that they are, uh, uh, you know, they don't die to the archers, but we see the, the, the knights continuing to move in and out, in and out, and at the same time baiting those spearmen forward and the archers being able to take off the shots, but we can see that the archer numbers have finally begun to overwhelm for running, and running is looking good, so despite, you know, but despite the option for the Muslim to push into this base and and, uh, you know, there was the potential for him to go down onto this sacred site and look to turn his attention down towards this. He has instead turned his attention towards the base and will be looking to punish here. And the question is going to be whether he can actually do this because behind this, he is still sitting on one town center. He's sitting on 49 villages at the moment compared over to his opponent who sits on 44. So he's built up a villager lead of five. But the question is going to be whether he can convert that lead into something meaningful because the longer this game goes on, the more Delhi keeps ticking. We can see the production buildings coming out. He's got, he essentially has four archery ranges here. Both of these guys have got scholars inside them he's going to continue to push out units and now you can see that force really starting to build here for running the battering ram is going to be coming in archers as well going to be looking to try and stay alive here up against those knights the knights going to be able to run in repelled by the spearmen spearmen got to be careful of the archers on the back line watch them as they focus down the spears here doing a, a great job those archers but at the same time the archer numbers beginning to build up for his opponent running doing a great job there and now all the knights going to be running in but keep in mind the reinforcements are just right here we're fighting in the base of his opponent so meanwhile running is quite 
literally doing no running to get to the front line, whereas his opponent has got to run all the way across the field before his reinforcements get here, which give him a significant advantage because when it comes to gathering up resources, he is going to have all those resources that he's spending right now in his base right now. And we can see those archer numbers are beginning to build up for running, and he's managed to take out all of the archers of his opponent. But look at the knights. The knights still remain, but there are plenty of spearmen that are getting made here. It looks like he's only got the one barracks at this stage, so it's only going to be the spears that are coming out, but th they come out one every seven seconds. So he should be able to keep his head above water here. You can see him trying to come out. Now it looks like a scholar actually going to be coming out onto the front line. Looking to do up a little bit of healing. Battering ram going to be coming behind the scenes. No villagers here to, to take it down, and villager is going to get pulled from that wood line and look to turn their attention towards it but it looks like running has held and keep in mind throughout this he is held with the two sacred sites so it really starts to beg the question has demuslim made a fatal mistake in the fact that he has not gone for these two sacred sites and rather turned his attention towards the base of his opponent sure he was able to take out a military production building sure he was able to take out the house and yeah he took out a lot of military but at the same time is the deficit really that big now that he's going to be able to overwhelm his opponent I, th I think not. I think not. I think running is in a good spot. He's playing as the Delhi. He's got access to a lot of resources behind these walls. You can see he's continuing to add in more and more, uh, more and more uh, infrastructure pieces on those uh, on those resources. Going to be taking the hunt, takes the berries, and now begins to turn his attention towards the middle of the map. Still yet to wall up in the center, uh, but uh, he is definitely going to be coming after these units as they try and break through on this sacred site. We can see there's not a lot of units here. Is that is that gate just open permanently? Is, is anybody allowed through that gate? That is, that is concerning. One thing you should not do, do not leave the gates open. If you leave the gates open, your enemy, well, technically they can't go through, but maybe they could, but they can't, but, 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 but maybe, maybe they could. So just don't, just don't do it, kids, all right? Just don't do it. But uh, we can see that, that mill going to be coming down on the front side here. It looks like he's got enough units to be able to protect it. Was that, is that a boar? No, it's going to be a wolf. And of course the wolf going to be chasing after that scholar. As you guys know, you can you can indeed uh, wallalol a unit, but you cannot wallalol a wolf. Uh, but now, continuing to move out, it looks like that sacred site was going to be neutralized here by a couple of these knights. He's going to struggle to do it. We can see the, the spearman going to be pushing in towards this angle. We're going to force him off. He's trying to his best to neutralize it. Not going to have any luck as those spearmen continue to allow that gold to be trickling in. And now, all of a sudden, running is going to be looking to fight, or take this fight, rather. Spearman coming in on the front line. Going to be able to hold off against his opponent. And archers on the back line. Look at them just teeing off so effectively. And now, all of a sudden, the knights are behind. They're separated from their archers. A little bit of a micro mistake here. Coming out from the Muslim. Something rare that you don't always see. The, the front gate is open, though. So he could be running through that. But uh, archers going to be going toe-to-toe -to -toe with archers, and typically that is not what you want to be doing as the French player. But the, the sacred side does actually get taken. Uh, so something that was missed behind the scenes by both me and running uh, is that the sacred site was eventually taken. But the, the difficult thing is right now, running has got a very good mass. He's got a lot of spearmen out, and we can see that running is also thinking about going to castle at this point in time. He's gathering up 1,200 resources, 800 gold, or 1,200 food, 800 gold. And uh, behind this, you know, we, we see the Muslim has dropped down that second town center, but I can't help but feel it's too little, too late at this point. He's in 68 villages at the moment compared to the 52 of his opponent, but uh, the, the timing on here is concerning. We see that second town center. I'm, I'm not sure exactly what the timing is. I would suspect probably about 14 to 15 minutes, and I feel like that, that might be a little bit too late. Ideally... I, I've been watching a lot of Divine games, I'll tell you that much. In his games up against the Delhi, he's looking for a very early town center. I'm talking like five, five and a half minutes. That that kind of early. And and his windows typically, you know, this is right when he's going to be looking to strike and, and take out that Delhi player. Uh, so we'll look to see how the Muslim manages to try and overwhelm his opponent here. It's going to be tough for him. Let's just say that much because the Dome of the Faith is no longer being constructed. It is finished. And now the compound of the Defender is in. And the compound of Defender, where is it? I don't know exactly where it is. It's probably going to be down in there in this corner. And indeed it is compound of the defender has come through we see all those upgrades coming through for the castle agent relics starting to get picked up now in the middle of the map another fight beginning to unfold you can see the deli player yet to upgrade his units it's going to take some time before they're in two minutes two minutes and 13 and still quite a few upgrades to go in that uh, in that feudal age as well so he's going to be doing his best to try and hold on he's going to be careful there are a lot of knights here and they continue to push through but that mass for running it is beginning to build it is looking very strong we can see the spearmen coming out looking to try and greet those knights but not having a lot of luck and now it, it's looking like it might be a bit of an, a better engagement here uh, for the Muslim. This is the kind of engagement he wants. When the spearmen come out towards the front, you can see the knights now coming in, trying to get some good clashes, and indeed they do. Relic behind this, sitting, posturing, waiting. Men at arms going to be coming out on the front line, doing a, a pretty decent job. We also see crossbows. Eight men at arms in the queue right now for, for running. He is absolutely looking to run the show right now, 
and going to be falling back behind the fence line. But keep in mind, in addition to there being no fence line, there are going to be knights behind it. And now Crossbow is going to be coming out, looking to try and seal the deal here and prevent this push from really coming to shove. As now that, that Scholar going to be going in the safe way as he captures the first relic. I think that's the first relic. Indeed, it is the first relic here. Uh, and uh, we can see one, two, three relics positioned right outside the base of his opponent, uh, outside the base of running, and then one more up towards the north. So I, I don't know exactly where this relic was. There it was. There you go. Answered my own question in the first screen. I must I must have stored that somewhere in my short-term memory, and then it just like it just reverted. It was just like, yes, Strongo, you remember. It was on this sacred site. And there you go. There you go. But now Archer's in the middle looking to push out. We can see the crossbowman coming in tandem. The Muslim up to the castle age as well. He's going to be struggling here because even though he's got that second town center, the tempo advantage is going to be with his opponent. We've got all those tier one upgrades. We take a look at the upgrades coming through from Demuslim. What have we got? No specialized pick. He does have horticulture. Does he have double broad axe? Indeed, he's just got double broad axe. So he's, his economy not looking terrible. Uh, but keep in mind, he's on 83 villages compared to his opponent on 60. It might not, like, might not seem like a lot. But remember, he's got those two sacred sites that are captured up. Still yet to take the third sacred site. But it's the relics he's going to be looking to capture as well. So that's 300 gold a minute. Together with the, the relic, that's 400 gold a minute. So it starts to really stack up. And it's been kicking for quite a while. Elephant's going to begin coming out as well. And this is where the death push begins. You guys know I love a good little ele elephant death push to come out. And that's exactly what it looks like we might have today as the first elephant is indeed on the way. Still yet to repair up this hole in the wall. I, I, I can't help but feel a little bit concerned. You know, just just chuck, chuck a, a, a wall up here, put a gate, and you, you, you can't even notice the difference. The only thing is that there's no risk of run buys. And that's a one potential way that your enemy can look to get into this game or go, get back into this game. Because even though I feel like, you know, judging this on an objective... Uh, well, from the objective perspective, you'd think that it would be an even game, but I can't help but feel that the Delhi Tempo is going to continue uh, to snowball and snowball from here as these upgrades continue coming through. We see Lumber Preservation, Fertilization, Acid Distillation, all those big upgrades coming through. What do we got going down for Delhi behind the scenes? It looks like just a mill, a couple of villagers moving out, bit of a migration going on, but uh, you can see he's heavily gathering up gold and the economy looking very strong for running as he continues to add more elephants in, I would suspect. But that first elephant going to be coming out. You can see the archers doing their best to try and focus it down. Could potentially have monks moving out to, or scholars moving out to try and heal this up. But we hear behind the scenes relics getting picked up. More and more scholars taking through all of these, all of these relics. And now on the front lines, Lance is going to be looking to fight it off with his opponent. All of the Royal Knights going to be trying their best. Men at Arms going to be th throwing down in the mix. Do we have a guild hall coming out? Indeed, it is going to be a guild hall. It is sat on gold for this moment. But now our Delhi player looks to continue pushing in. We'll head into the cinematic mode as we start to watch the uphill battle begin to unfold. The closer we get to the Muslim's base, the better for reinforcements as those. Lance is going to be looking to run in. A couple of villagers do get found out. You can see he's adding in farms instead of focusing on the front line. And as a consequence, it looked like those villagers might go down. Manages to save a couple of them. A few hits were taken and we hear those relics continuing to be taken. Do we have a monastery added in yet from Demuslim? We'll take a look in his base. It doesn't look like it just yet. It doesn't look like it just yet. And that is concerning because not only are there sacred sites going over towards your enemy, but there are relics going over towards your enemy. And it's four relics that we've seen taken away from the Muslim at this point in time. Running, doing a very decent job at this point in time. And now going to continue pushing through the middle. We can see a scholar actually coming out and looking to fight. Whether it gets picked off, I'm not too sure, but we'll have to watch how the Muslim looks to play it. And now that elephant going to continue moving up. And this is the really scary death push that begins to come out running, doing a very good job with the Delhi. And now we've got to keep going down and it's got a red health bar above it i think that might be runnings and that is not a good thing sacred sites have now all been completely captured and we really start to see that the muslim is on the back foot and this is what i was talking about this is where the train really starts rolling downhill and it's so difficult to stop the men at arms have come out they're going to be able to protect that elephant that elephant's going to just march through everything it provides so much damage in the back line at the same time all of the crossbow is going to be able to support this and prevent any sort of armored unit from coming in and doing much damage it's mainly those royal knights that we're looking at and speaking of royal knights it looks like we might have ourselves a bit of a royal keep going down towards this sacred site but look at that we've got double keeps coming up and the muslim reassesses this scenario and now we have got ourselves a triple oh baby a triple looks starting to look like a triple keep it is indeed a triple keep that is coming up right now we've got all three under construction at the moment. More units continuing to move out. A lot of villagers getting pulled. We can see the men at arms beginning to run in as fast as they can. Villagers got to be careful. You can see them underneath that scaffolding trying to get that keep up. It's sitting at about 80%, 85%, 90%. I think it's going to get up. It's not doubtful at all that this keep is going up. And indeed, it does go up, providing line of sight to the area. And we can just see how strong that keep is, how steadfast that keep is as all the royal knights go down underneath it. And now the archers looking to get cleaned up. Men at arms also beginning to chase through. You can see the damage coming out. Arbolatria on the backside trying their best to hold on and force these units back. But 
You can see the struggle. You can really see the struggle in the Muslim. Oh no, the Muslim. He is in a bit of a jiffy right now. Bit of a jiffy, a bit of a bit of a situation. I probably I think that's probably the best way to say it. Look how much stone running is sitting on right now. 26 vill villagers. He is gathering up the stone outcropping. He is really utilizing this compound of the defender. And on the front line, you can see villagers have now been pulled, trying to take out the villagers that look to put up this keep. It looks doubtful that this one is going to get up. And indeed, I think he realizes he's trying his best to get out of there, but he is surrounded. Elephant coming in, though. Elephant looking to do some damage. And now the villagers turning their attention towards the elephant. Okay, okay. They make the, they they choose to go the other way and probably a wise decision. But uh, we'll take a look from running's perspective right now. He's got all three of these sacred sites captured. Keep that in mind. And so it means that his opponent is on a timer. And remember that this is a very strong position for Delhi to be in. This is where all of their timings, like we, we are sitting at the peak right now because they are just about to hit another power spike. We can see all of their, their tech upgrades are coming in even closer. And now a very ambitious keep trying to come down here for, uh, for uh, Demuzi. Muslim. He's going to be trying his best. God, my camera is spazzing out like crazy right now. I apologize for that one. Uh, but uh, now going to be able to take out those villagers and look at them go down. This one, I'm not sure about. I, I think there's probably enough villagers to be able to get that up. 17 villagers. They're going to be able to get that one up. Keep back here. Probably going to have to go down if he's not careful. And indeed, it does look to be the way. No boiling oil coming through just yet for the Muslim. Uh, and interestingly, he is liquid the Muslim. So that boiling oil definitely going to be an important tech for him. A lot of villagers going down there. We'll do a quick stock take and see where these two players are at. 92 villagers for the Muslim at the moment. 66 villagers for running. But keep in mind, that's exactly where he wants to be. Four. He's got the, the four relics behind this. He's also... So there's the four relics right there. He's also got the three sacred sites. So that gives him a total of 850 gold per minute passive that is not being showed. So if we take a look right now at the income per minute, you can see that running is miles ahead, technically on negative zero income per minute. I'm not sure why the game doesn't crash when negative zero is uh, is displayed as the uh, is displayed as the wood per minute. But uh, I, I guess we shouldn't give the developers any ideas. But now that wolf, that wolf going to be coming in good use right here, as not only is that keep going to be sitting on the uh, on the wolf or the foundation of that keep, but... <laughs> that alarm going off and going to be distracting running up towards the north. Now he's going to make a decision, you know. Do, do I commit to the keep or, or what, what do I do here? And yes, you do commit to the keep because once that keep gets up, then the, the keep is going to just kill the wolf straight away. So it's best not to worry about that wolf. It is just going to be annoying as it continues to attack that villager. And now villagers looking at, like they might be in a bit of dire trouble. He's got 18 villagers up here. He, you can see he thought about it for a second. He's like, wait a minute, we're at 99%. We might as well just complete the bad boy. Indeed, he does complete the bad boy. The wolf going to be chasing away those units for villagers. Villagers look like they go down. 15 units managed. 15 get inside. Actually, you would... I wasn't... I, I think there was 18 villagers here. I'm not sure why there's four bodies and, and 15 inside. But uh, going to be able to lock down that wood line. And so now you can see... Now we can start to see how the game plan for running is beginning to run. Because he has now locked down this wood line. Okay, you can see that the villagers are still here. But I wouldn't be surprised if we see an outpost or two look to come up towards that position. Maybe even a keep. He's got so many resources in the bank. He can afford another three keeps right now. Trebuchet going to be coming out as well. We we are definitely beginning to enter trench warfare. And the wood is starting to look dire for Liquid to Muslim at this point in time. He's got one wood line that remains over towards this eastern side. That is going to be it. There's a couple more wood lines down towards this position. But you can see the keep going to be sitting in the middle of them. Going to be preventing any villagers from coming in and now in the middle of the map. More keeps beginning to unload upon each other as that springwood emplacement is coming through at uh at uh it seems like a discounted price hold on how much how much was that uh, never mind that springwood emplacement is long gone another keep gonna be coming back here for running so he is really looking to keep it up with the kardashians he's trying his best and more all these trebuchets gonna be coming out you can see he's got the scholar inside so gonna be looking to speed that bad boy up 69 villagers at the moment for running i've got no co-caster so i've got to say nice uh, 109 villagers for the Muslim. So you'd think that he'd be in a good position, right? He's 40 villagers up. Uh, yeah, yeah, not really. Um, he is currently sitting on 34 military compared to his opponent on 36, but it's about the advantage with regard to the sacred sites. You can see that there are so many sacred sites. Or th there are three sacred sites and so many keeps coming up right now. The compound of the defender really begins to compound when you start adding in all these keeps. When you take advantage of the stone that's out on this map, and you can see that that's exactly what running is doing. He's got so much stone in the bank. And now those knights looking to move forward, looking to try and be a bit of a distraction, going to be getting caught by that keep that keep going to be trying its best to take out those knights you can see it manages to survive with 35 health and we continue to see the struggle a lot of military units as that keep in the center he's going to go down trebuchet is finally going to be coming out now for the muslim he's beginning to drop houses down on the front line he's a bit more population trying to get more more units out here but at the same time running is just continuing to add keeps we've got one two three four five six keeps coming up for running at this point in time and he is just going to continue to add more as he takes more and more resources down towards the south. It looks like that mining camp is going to get cleaned up, but uh, not too much of an issue. He just moves the villagers up to the larger gold vein. That is going to be A-OK -okay for him. 
But now we really see the Muslim is on a timer. He's going to be trying his best to take out this sacred site. I suspect that's where he's going to be turning most of his attention. There's a lot of keeps to work through to get down towards this position. He's going to have to go through at least three to be able to take that sacred site. This one, it's only two, so it's not such a big deal. But uh, running behind this, you can see he's really adding a lot of trebuchets. And with these trebuchets, he's able to actually focus down the trebuchets of his opponent. And you can see the trebs actually missing out on their targets right there. More villagers actually coming up. But four, four boulders came down. Only one of them actually hit their target. But now we've got Springles coming out as well from running. So he is going to be looking to take control uh, in this scenario and really look to force his opponent into a bad spot. But now more units beginning to come out from Demuslim. He looks like he might be able to contest these sacred sites. He's going to be looking to fight underneath these keep. And he's got to be careful. We don't have that boiling oil coming in just yet. you will be able to tell because of those little those little uh, oil holes, I guess you'd say. Uh, but it, it should be coming through shortly. But now more arrows going to be coming through. More arrows going to be coming through. More, more time is going to be coming through. We've got sacred defeat, sacred defeat coming in three minutes. Watch out, fellas. Abel Atreya doing a lot of damage to that tower elephant. There is so much damage coming out. But at the same time, I mean, the trebuchet sitting back behind here is focusing down a keep that probably doesn't need to get focused down. Looking like the trebs are actually <laughs> trying their best to focus down the Abel Atreya in the middle. Look at the look at the way that the sprinkled placements as well. Just dishing out damage non-stop here. Fighting underneath these keeps really going to co cost you a lot of issues and those boulders just narrowly missing their targets and now moving his attention up towards this northern position. You can see villagers going to come out and going to be looking to repair up this keep. The question is how much wood has got has uh, running got in the bank and it doesn't look like a lot. He's sitting on 230. You can see that boiling oil is coming through. It's got a minute 30 to go on it and keep in mind we've got another three minutes before sacred victory comes through and that is where the timer is going to be starting to close out. It's going to be around that 32 minute mark I think. We'll have to double check exactly when it's going to be. You will hear those gongs go up off for liquid to Muslim. He will be able to tell you exactly when that is but now sprinkled movement out you can see there it is two minutes set your timers it's going to be 31 55 and the question is whether we actually see that coming out or whether we have a neutralization coming in but uh, keep going to be coming down in this position the bosom going to be looking to apply pressure but that's the third keep that's going down in this area it starts to get more concerning and hold on a minute is that the keep that's the keep that's researching boiling oil i'm not sure if he knows but if he keeps targeting down that keep he could be in a great spot third trebuchet coming into the mix as well running is very very low right now on wood and that keep is continuing to get shelled it's got 45 seconds. I tell you what, I think 45 seconds is going to be pretty bloody close to actually taking this out. The wood is struggling. The wood is struggling. Don't say it, running. Don't say it. Insufficient wood. No, not like this, running. Now we are actually getting in, into a little bit of trouble territory. Your income per minute has started to steep down. You still got plenty of gold, but look at your wood. Your wood is struggling. Now he buys a little bit more wood. Running, definitely running on fumes right now. He is trying his best to keep this keep alive. You can see that it's got 19 seconds for boiling oil to come in. I think that oil is going to be coming in three and we hear one minute to go until sacred site victory we have got three keeps that are going to have boiling oil on this sacred site and the question is going to be is his opponent able to hold we're going to enter into the cinematic view as the villagers move out into the middle of the map they're going to be looking to hold this sacred site and indeed they're going to be able to do so they're going to be turning their attention towards the sprinkles the sprinkles are going to be trying their best just to bait out those villagers and they do a great job as they force them back now villagers moving out towards the central sacred site but still units looking to hold it so we've got the advantage going over to his opponent it. Remember, as long as he keeps his feet on this sacred site, he's going to be dancing around and he's going to be a happy camper. But now we continue to see insufficient wood. More more insufficient wood coming out. The trebuchet is doing magic work on the back line. Village is going to be going down here. Arbol Atria slowly but steadily taking these units out. And you can see the sacred site going to start ticking. And there it goes. The sacred site now starting to tick. Four running in this position. He's going to be trying his best to hold on. You can see the Arbol Atria just doing such a great job. More units continuing to come out, rallying towards this position. Call all units to the front lines. All units to to the front lines. Arbolatria is trying their best. How many units have we got behind this running? He's sitting on 64 villagers, but he is bringing them all to the front line right now. On the opposite side, you can see 94 villagers for Demuslim. I, I can't help but feel like he's going to need to pull them. Running is trying his best right now to run down this clock, and indeed he's going to continue doing it as long as these units stand on it. I don't necessarily agree with the mechanic. And once again, insufficient wood coming out for running. These keeps just being so strong, so steadfast. And I'm starting to worry right now because that timer is starting to go down. You can see that the sacred site, even though there's units on top of it, it's not Actually, it, it, the, the, the timer is still being depleted. So it means that even though we've got the Muslim that's standing on the sacred side, he could still technically lose the game. And indeed he does. It's a sacred victory to running. He goes through to the next round. The Muslim loses the game. He's going to be heading down into the loser's bracket. And it's going to be so hard for him to get back up and get through to that final eight. Fellas, if you've enjoyed this cast, make sure you check out EGC TV this weekend. I'll catch you guys in the next one. 15 GMT. Be there or be square.